red. Okay, get out a red. And I would like you to color the k's. Because oh, this time we get the k's. What did it say? Cat and cup. <laughs> It is pretty cute. Is it? Nice. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Julia and this is Julia at Home. Today I'm doing a review of Logic of English Foundations A. Um, we are almost done with this, uh, well this part of the curriculum. Um, we will be moving on to Foundations B. We have only a few lessons left. I'm really excited to move on to B. It looks super fun. We have really enjoyed this. Uh, let me show you what it includes. So it comes with a teacher's manual. I keep a little uh, post-it note in there to show me where I am. Um, it also comes with a activity book for your child. Um, we are doing the cursive version. There is a cursive version and there's a print version. The teacher's manual tells you how to do both. You would get a different workbook if you were doing the print version. Of this. It comes with, so this is, I got the package. I got the package that had all the stuff I needed for Foundations A and Foundations B, but I'm showing you the stuff we're using for Foundations A. Um, this is Doodling Dragons. It's a book of ABC sounds, um, and it just has a, it just has a page for each sound. I'll probably show you the insides of the books in a, in a minute. Um, it comes with a bunch, oh, ours also came, we got with the whiteboard, it has the bigger one which we use most of the time on one side and little ones on the other side so we pull this out um, each lesson we also pull out our little bucket of uh, dry erase markers and a wipe um, and then it comes with some cards so there's okay let me start with these for reading and these are actually I have piles of just the cards that we've done which is most of them um, but I have been in a different I haven't pulled out the ones we haven't done yet they're in different sections so these are reading cards um, and so they have the print on one side and it tells you the sound it makes on the other. Um, I'm trying to find one that has an example. Oh, here we go. Here's a vowel. Um, so it will tell you when it makes more than one sound. So this is um, E, -E um, makes the two different sounds. You probably can't see that. It's probably backwards, but it uh, comes with all these cards um, for reading. And then as well as... Um, tactile cards so it's um, these are for writing um, it's uh, kind of like sandpaper letters in Montessori it's just tactile um, but it has the lines which the uh, Montessori sandpaper letters don't so it's kind of the next level up I think from those and they're smaller um, oh in the back though it'll tell you um, the basic stroke and oh, I should mention they have these cards for the strokes too which is really helpful for us at the beginning um, I currently don't have them in this pile anymore because we're just to the point where we're just practicing the letters, not the strokes. But at the beginning, we were doing the strokes as well. Um, it, it describes for you how to do it in words. Um, so I can help, I can help um, talk her through it as well. Um, so these are great. And then here I also have, I came with a set because again, I got cursive. Um, it's just a set of one of each of the phonograms and I have it all mixed up for the games we were playing, but there's print, which is blue and there's cursive, which is green. Um, and because we are learning to write in cursive, we are learning to read in print. And even though that may seem confusing, it's actually working really, really well for us. And if you go to logic, logic of English's, um, website, I think they have a blog. They, they have explanations of why they recommend starting with cursive. Um, and it is something that uh, traditional Montessori sources also agree with. So um, that is actually what I was intending to do from the beginning and one of the things I really like about this program. So um, let me show you a little bit inside and then we'll go into more detail and into how we use it. So this is the teacher's manual. It's nice hardcover, um, so it will last me through more than one student. Um, it gives you the scope and sequence. Um, so you can kind of see there's um, lessons, about five, and then a review lesson. Um, and I'll try to show you both. So, oh, this is just supplies needed and, and 
gives you the phonograms, it gives you materials needed. There's all sorts of good information in here. Um, common Core Standards. I don't really follow these, but if you were in a classroom, these would be super useful. Or if you're, I don't know if there are any homeschool states that require you to do Common Core, but if there are, that could be really useful to you. Um, so this is what a general lesson looks like. It always tells you the objectives and the materials needed and optional. Um, I haven't actually used, I don't think any of the optional <laughs> materials. Um, so it starts with um, more awareness activities for the most part, but every lesson is a little different and it'll change as you go. This is kinesthetic awareness of sound, um, compound words, uh, which is an activity that's in the activity book. Uh, let's see if I'm just going to quickly switch here to the activity book and see if this one that my daughter, oh, it is still in here. So you can see um, here she was circling as I was doing it. So um, I would say, you know, rain bow, which I'm reading up here, and she would circle hopefully that one. Um, so the, the, um, that's basically what the activity book is for. I will show it more in depth in a minute as well. Um, and then you move into the handwriting portion. Um, this one's going over the swing stroke. Um, and then it's having you here write on paper, um, which is also, sorry for switching back and forth so much. I want to give you a good view of this um, in here. So uh, we would practice on the whiteboard, and then once she feels comfortable, do some in her book. Um, I don't require her to do this many usually. <laughs> I don't know if she chose to or I had her do extra. Okay, I also want to show you one of the later lessons because they end up looking a little different. Um, let's see. Let's, let's look at this one. Um, so this one we're learning N. And it'll start with ph phonemic awareness again. Um, this is working on blends at this point as well. And then it'll go into reading. Mm. So whenever it teaches a letter, it teaches you reading it. And we'll use the doodling dragons for that. While I'm there, let me pull out and show you the mm page and the doodling dragons so you can get an idea. There we go. That was easy. So they're all just one two page spread for each, um, each sound. And these are all the single letters with the exception of qua, Q-U is in here. Um, so we've done the reading, we've read that, and then it'll move into handwriting and then you're writing that same letter. And again, this gives you instructions for the cursive and the print, we're using the cursive. And then these later ones, why I wanted to show you this is they usually also include um, activities that you can do and then a spelling list. Um, here we go. And then there's sometimes different reading activities at the end. So that is what this actually looks like. Let me do another flip through quickly. Just show you more of what's in the activity book because it, it does, there are different kinds of activities that change. You can see here. So Hopefully that gives you an idea of what is inside them. I apologize, the light's getting a little weird because it's getting dark on me, but yeah, just hopefully you can see me and it's okay. Um, I also just wanted to mention that the activities that are um, suggested in the uh, teacher's manual, you have all the materials for them if you've gotten the package. So it includes using these cards that I showed you before. There's different games with instructions. Um, my daughter really likes slap it where if there's two that pop in a row you slap it or there's a card that's a slap it and you get all the cards and you try to get all the cards um, but you have to say it's you have to say the phonetic uh, sound that or sounds that that letter makes um, but it also comes with uh, in the activity book there's cards that we cut out um, this is I believe these are action words which is actually also a Montessori activity but like she would read um, this is backwards for you, but it says jump um, and then do it. And then another one that is in here is uh, charades, which we had my husband join us for, which was super fun. Um, so like this is dog. And so, I mean, it's charades, right? You're supposed to read it to yourself and then act it out. There are also readers, which are one of my favorite things in there. And what it comes with, this is one that she's completed. 
um, it comes with pages with the words on it and then it comes with the picture separately so she cuts them out and glues them on the correct page after reading what's on the page and a lot of them have to do with animals which is perfect for my daughter um, so I just wanted to mention those activities and now I want to talk a little bit about how we use it so when we started out we started when she was just five and we had already done some of the Montessori reading sequence so she actually did know the sounds that all of these um, phonograms made all the single letter phonograms and she also knew qua and some double letter phonograms um, she was really struggling with writing and so I decided to take it back and I really like how they introduce the reading and writing together that is something they also do in Montessori it's just my daughter was ready for the sounds and for the reading a lot earlier than she was ready for the writing. She had no interest whatsoever in tracing the same paper letters or doing any of that. So I went ahead and did the reading with her because she was developmentally ready for that, um, but held off on the writing. So um, this was a way for me to kind of come back and reinforce that reading and do the writing as well. And I think it has made her, um, she's reading um, anything that's just purely phonetic. She reads really easily. Her doing this program, she was able to read it before, to be honest. She was able to read it before, but she's a lot more, she's faster, she's more fluent. I believe she's more confident in those words now. And we're gonna continue on to B, which is probably where she was le reading level-wise, but we've kind of shored up her foundation. Um, so, with foundation, <laughs> that was not purposeful. <laughs> so, um, that I feel good about that moving forward. Um, so when we started, and she was five, and she was kind of hesitant, we did half a lesson a day um, because I wanted to keep it short, and they can get a little bit long. Um, so we start with half a lesson a day, and now we do a full lesson a day. Um, and sometimes, most of the time, if, if some of the lessons can get a little long, so we don't do every activity in the lesson, but we might then take another day where we do the activities and not the lesson. Um, and we're doing that two to three times a week. Um, so we're not doing, we're doing a lesson each day. We're doing the lessons, but we're not doing a lesson every single day of the week. Um, yes. Yeah, so that's how we've been using it and how I plan on continue to using, continuing to use it. We're going to, hopefully the goal is three days a week. Um, we'll do hopefully one lesson a day, but again, if they're really long and I need to split it up, I will. Um, or if I feel like she needs more practice in something, I will, or we'll just play games to review. Um, that's part of the beauty of homeschooling. I am going at her pace. Um, this is one of those subjects that I will continue to do individually with each of my children and not combine them because I think it's important that they can each go at their own pace in their learning to reading, in their learning to read and learning to write journey. I did mention a little bit how we kind of went from Montessori into this, but I wanted to just point out a couple of the similarities that I like between this Logic of English program and the Montessori method, um, in case you are a Montessori homeschooler thinking of using this. Um, they, both, they both teach phonetically, and they also both have, um, they integrate sight words in some way. And I, I'm gonna say this is a caveat that I was following the Dwyer Montessori method that's more similar to the AMI approach, not so similar to the AMS um, pink, blue, green series approach. So just gonna put that caveat out there for those of you who are Montessori nerds and know what I'm talking about. Um, so when we get into B, there are like words that they'll review, um, common words. Um, so they have that in common. They also have the option of starting with cursive, which many AMI Montessori schools do. Um, and that has worked out really well for us um, because my daughter has basically taught herself print. She's from the beginning, we've read in print and we've been writing in cursive and she recognizes both. And um, print just like came really easy to her on her own. So basically I don't have to teach it. Um, we may review some things and clean it up later. But if we had started with print and then do what most people, well, some schools, a lot of schools and people now don't even add cursive. Um, but if we did the traditional um, starting with print and add, adding cursive in second or third grade, I think it's third grade usually, um, I really would have had to work at teaching her cursive, um, which is, I feel like something I don't have to do now. 
So that's really a benefit to me. Um, it's also worked well for us because we can use some of our Montessori materials, mostly, mainly the movable alphabet. I'm gonna insert a picture or a video here of us doing that. So um, when we use the spelling words, because writing again is harder for my daughter, um, what we've done is I've had her, I've like said the word and then had her write it with the movable alphabet. And then we'll choose one or two of those words to write on the, um, on the whiteboard, <laughs> couldn't think of that word, uh, after we've done it with the, um, with the movable alphabet. So she's still practicing spelling and thinking through the sounds in the word, but she's not, um, she's not having to write out every single one and worry about the connections and everything because that makes it a lot more difficult. So it's kind of a way of isolating the difficulty. And that is something that they recommend you can do. This actually, I did not pull them out, but it also comes with um, little tile cards, which are similar to the movable alphabet. I happen to like the movable alphabet better. They're a little bigger, they're wooden. We have the cursive version. Um, so I use that instead, but you don't have to purchase the movable alphabet. You could use their tiles. Um, and we also sometimes will do some other reading like activities, um, such as matching classified cards, because she just really enjoys that, which is not part of Logic English program, but is a Montessori reading activity that we will um, incorporate sometimes, especially when she, she occasionally asks me for that. I apologize when I look down, I'm looking at my notes to make sure I cover everything for you. Pros and cons. There are a lot of pros to me. It's It works well it, with the Montessori materials and the Montessori principles. So for somebody who's doing Montessori at home, that is fantastic, but it does have more structure to it, which I also like for me because I was struggling to make sure I was just, you know, sometimes you need that structure um, and I just did. Um, I like that it's phonetic. I like that you have the option between cursive and print. There's really not many programs out there for writing if you want to start with cursive. Um, so that was something that I was looking for. I like that it's got tactile elements and I like that it has so many fun games and activities. And I really like that it comes, please ignore any screaming in the background. <laughs> They're okay, I promise. Um, they, I really like that it comes with everything that you need for the games and the activities if you buy the package. Um, so lots, those are my lots of pros. I think the only con that I have is the cost. It can be a little pricey, especially to buy the package. But for me, it was totally worth it. I would do it again. I would recommend it to um, other homeschool parents out there for sure. My daughter has really liked it and she's really grown a lot in, in her reading fluency and her handwriting and I am super excited to see what happens as we move into Foundations B. If you like this, please click the thumbs up button below. Um, comment to me if you use Logic of English, any of their, their um, programs, or what you are using for uh, reading and writing, if you like it or if you don't. Um, and if you want to see more videos on homeschooling, things at home, garden, um, planning, and pregnancy and baby updates, then please subscribe. I'll talk to you.